All right, time for a long overdue update. I haven't uh, <laughs> done any solar system type updates in a while. As you can see, it is now in the garage, um, along with the other crazy stuff that I have in the garage, including my shop heater and uh, just uh, everything. And I've managed to clean up pretty good in here. Um, but let's get back to this. This has a couple of nice updates. This here, I don't know if you guys have used these yet or not, but they're they're excellent. Um, the Ego Nexus power units. Um, they they're a power station that you can use on tools and you know outdoors, and they use all of the Ego batteries. Now, if you'll wonder what this cob cobweb nest of of cabling is. Um, as usual, I never leave things alone <laughs> as, as they are. Um, the catch to these units is you couldn't do pass-through charging, meaning you couldn't charge it and use it at the same time. Well, now you actually can because of what I have done. I put a charge controller on it um, so you can see the, the uh, actual battery voltage and whatnot that's on all four of these packs. Now these packs, I have used um, these connectors, which are, are um, speak on for audio actually, but they handle uh, 20 amps continuous. Um, so they're, they're perfect for this job because um, each one of these batteries, as you can see here, I've, I've gone into the battery itself and connected directly to the, the positive and negative. Um, and that that is coming out, going into this pack. They're all three combined that way. Um, all three are, are in parallel to each other. Um, and so they all three charge at the same time off of the, the solar unit. Um, therefore keeping it fully charged while, while we're using it. Um, and that, that is handy and it can easily be, be detached if I want to use it outwards, uh, you know, out in, um, in the field. Um, all I have to do is unplug these three um, joints and pick it up and go. These, these connectors always stay on the battery. So you just simply disconnect the battery and swap batteries out or, or use them in the, in the mowers and the other other things and that plug just doesn't do anything unless I bring it into here. Um, once I bring it in, into here, I'm, I make sure that the battery is at the same voltage as the rest of the, the batteries, which is why I have these, these chargers over here, um, the regular tool chargers, and just charge it up, put a meter on it, um, and, and see if it's, you know, I put a meter on, on the system that's already charged or add it whatever voltage it may be if it's at you know if it's at 50 volts then I'll charge until this one is is at its 50 this battery I haven't modified because it's only a 2.5 amp hour battery and it just isn't worth doing it um, that I use for the blowers and the uh, the smaller um, devices it just isn't worth modifying um, these however are very much worth doing it uh, if you have any experience doing it, I would, I would highly, I mean, you know, it, it voids your warranty on them, but you know, who, who really, who, you know, who cares? Um, <laughs> it just, it's so useful to do that, especially if you're, if you already have solar, uh, solar power, um, because it completely makes this thing, uh, a, a pass through charging. You can just run it continuous, um, now these batteries do change percentage, like if they drop down in percentage, if the solar hasn't you know, been performing well and you've been using a lot of power, they'll drop down in percentage. And then if the solar comes back up, they won't, they'll charge, but the computer, the, the, the um, sensor inside of them doesn't recognize it unless you disconnect it or lift it up from the, from the unit. For a few seconds and then drop it back down you'll see it reconfigure and then boom if there's your refreshed version of, of what the actual charge is on it um, I'm gonna come up with a a, uh, a chip 
that I can put into this system that will automatically say every every five minutes just disconnect the the power and then reconnect it or not the power but the sense cable so you can still draw from it while it's doing that but it will disconnect the chip that's inside of it um, and then reconnect it so that it, it thinks it's been lifted up off of there and and reset so therefore we'll get a real-time uh, up-to-date status of whether the batteries are charged or discharged um, and that will be fairly easy to do I'll give a full rundown on these because I know a lot of people that use the the uh, Eagle Nexus have wondered how you can do it well um, that's working practice right there it's been this way all summer um, and it just you know runs flawlessly um, throughout um, the rest of the system is is pretty much the same now I've got the battery the the uh, the blanket on the on the battery pack getting ready for the for the winter just now done that now which is why I'm doing the update um, the only other update that I do have is uh, of course I'm using another there's two charge controllers on this one the one that's inside that inverter and then this unit here um, and so that's the two charge controllers and the third charge controller here because if you've noticed what these two lines are I have patched in from all three of these and patched both solar power banks together so it's all working as one big battery uh, whether I'm using this inverter um, which I'm not at the moment but whether I'm using this inverter or the main system they all draw off of the, the same uh, battery pack uh, which is these three batteries plus this big battery pack down here um, and so it just works really well uh, and tying these into it gave me an extra 20 because they're they're actually on and still performing even though this is off um, because it's drawing the power from these and these are always on connections um, and so it works really well um, and like I say, it adds, added another 20, 22 amp hours to this, to this battery pack. Um, and like I say, if I use this unit externally, all I have to do is check the battery pack voltage, which I can see it <laughs> right here on these, on any of these meters here. Um, we'll just activate this one so you can see, but, um, so I can see any of my voltages, you know, I check the main battery pack voltage and then put a meter on whichever battery I've been using and charge it up to that, up to the, the pack voltage and, you know, um, and then just plug it in and right then it becomes part of the system again. So it really works well. Um, and I like it. Um, it's letting me use a lot more of this power internally through the house because I've added this new feature um, which is 240 um, coming off of the inverter um, and it runs you see this big cable and it runs and it comes over here to this box which the refrigerators and the freezers and all that just kicked on um, but it comes to this box um, which is a panel box uh, on wheels and this has a, a 25 foot this cable this big thick cable that we see here is 25 feet so I can um, I can take this box out if I need to temporarily use power somewhere else within this footage range if I don't want to plug into all of the outlets that are down there with extension cords if I'm if I'm using something with a lot more power I can just roll this whole box out because um, it's on wheels and it easily moves so I can just roll this box to where I need the power um, and and there you go breakers and in the whole nine yards um, and so that comes in real handy uh, it was actually just an extra um, it just a way to plug into it uh, so that I didn't have to use because in the in the shop when we had it in the other store there's a built-in breaker box in that building so I just had to come out of the main inverter and, and tap into it but when I brought it in here I had no way of of having outlets hooked up to it without having to just you know uh, patch outlets and stuff into it and I don't like doing that that's you know 
Um, this is a very safe and very cool way of doing it. It's twist lock. Um, and so the, the main output of the of all the system comes through this this uh, 240 and I just twist lock into it and then from there I have all my breakers and everything that I need so um, and since I already had this box uh, this power tap for for um, music equipment uh, I figured that's a, a excellent way to put it to use uh, while it's not being used and it's easy enough to disconnect if I do need to use it um, just unplug the cable and roll it up and, and load it up and be ready to go. So that's no big, uh, no big issue. Um, the other update is that I have, I have them all on the phone and I can show you, but I can also access it without. But if I want to turn on my shop heater, I can either do it remotely on the phone or I can hit it right there. And, uh... On comes the, the shop heater. I can put that on a schedule if I want to. Um, and you'll see that it'll, it'll start to glow and get red and, you know, do the whole nine yards. Um, or I can just kill it right here at the, at the uh, thing again. And, uh, and like I say, that's, that is put there because I can do that remotely on my, on my, uh, on the phone. Um, and in fact, we can see, if I pull this up, all right. So here are the devices um, set up that, that I can get to. Um, that's the battery heat. Um, and then that's the shop and the shop heater. Um, let's see, we can turn it on, like I say, or turn it off. So, as usual, you know, I, I uh, <laughs> I, this is the way I keep my my shop, everything that I, that I can actually add tech to, gets tech added to it. Um, mainly because it's fun and, and, uh, and handy. Um, like I say, setting those up on schedules, um, so that if I want to maintain temperature in this, because that, that heater doesn't have a thermostat as such on it. It just has a power, just a power button on and off. Um, so I could actually do it either by temperature. If I bought a, a temperature thermostat that would cut that on or off, or just simply have it the way I have it, uh, and run. Uh, to where I can just set it on a schedule, like let it run for 30 minutes every three hours or something like that. Uh, you know, um, right now I don't plan on doing that, but in the deep of winter I may um, may have it set like that. Uh, otherwise, I think that's about it for now. But it is in and operating well, and and uh, I do have all of these these different of course you probably familiar probably familiar with the with the solar bank that's over there and i just have it um all the cabling that uh it takes to run those two different arrays are just coming down through here and they they are, are put to use on there then i have this third array um, that i haven't mounted anywhere yet and i will um, I'll do like I did over there or something like that. The reason this one is here is because, um, when the sun changes for the winter, that bank over there actually gets, I'll show you, uh, at some point, but it's so rainy and cloudy and whatnot today that <laughs> it didn't matter one way or the other. But that bank gets, um, interrupted by about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, the sun just hits it and it's... The, you know, or the shade hits it from them trees right there and it's done uh, whereas this one we're I don't lose power on that one until about uh, 530 so I get an extra 800 watts um, of power coming from there just just because of where it's at and so that's the reason that I tied all three of these together 
um, in three different charge controllers um, is because of the get this closed up real quick that's the reason I have those tied in three separate charge controllers is because of that uh, and, and situations like that um, and it works works really well and that's it